Hello, this is Kevin from Team 21229, and today we'll be going over tuning the translational PIDF for the 2.2.0 version of Pedropathing. If you're using an earlier version of Pedropathing, then the tuning process may look slightly different as you'll use dashboard instead of panels and run different op modes for the tuning, but the general process should still remain the same. To prepare to tune this, we'll need to open up panels. If you haven't used panels before, you can learn how to use it by reading its documentation on the Pedropathing website. Additionally, we'll need to open up our driver hub and connect our gamepad to it, making sure to press Start and A. Select the tuning op mode and follow the instructions on the telemetry with your gamepad to go to the manual folder, then select the translational tuner op mode. Once we run the correct op mode, we can push the robot left or right at varying amounts and observe how the robot corrects back to its starting location. Based on the robot's behavior, we can start adjusting the P, D, and F values based off of how the robot corrects. You can see in panels that in the configurables tab, you can navigate under constants and scroll down until you see the coefficients translational PIDF. Here you can modify each of the individual values. However, we won't recommend modifying the I value in this process. We can first start with the feed, tuning the feed forward. The feed forward accounts for the friction between the motors, wheels, and ground, and sets a minimum power output for the motors to compensate for this. To tune it, we can set all other P, I, and D values to zero, and slowly increase the F term bit by bit until the robot starts to move. Then we can decrease the feed forward term from there. So for example, here when the feed forward is 0 0.015, uh, the robot essentially has no power over it and I can move the robot freely and it doesn't move at all. So we can try increasing the feed forward. After increasing it to 0 0.5, we can hear the robot shaking and moving around. So this means that this feed forward is too high, so we can lower it to 0 0.04. You can still hear the robot moving a bit, so after decreasing it to 0 0.03, this turned out to work well, and the, ro and the robot uh, barely has enough power to move. Let's start with the p-value. It will generally control how the aggressively the robot corrects back. For example, with a lower p-value, the robot will head back to its starting position more slowly, and if it's too weak, then the robot might not correct back at all. On the other hand, if we try increasing p to a really high value, this will cause the robot to move much more aggressively with the risk of having more overshoot and oscillations, and this behavior isn't very desired. So instead, we want to find a sweet spot such that the robot can accurately correct back to its position with the least amount of overshoot. Generally, the p-value will fall somewhere between 0 point something. It's important to note that although this 0 0.1 value works well for this robot, these PIDF values can vary from robot to robot. So don't be afraid to try out some different values and see what works best for you. Additionally, if you have a dual PID system enabled, then this is called the main PIDF, and we're mostly concerned about its ability to correct from large errors. So its accuracy from small errors at this point isn't, uh, isn't the most important factor because the secondary PIDF tuning that will help solve this issue. 
Now we can move on to tuning the D value, and it'll help dampen the overshoot when created while the robot's correcting back to its path. We can increase the D value to further dampen uh, the oscillations. However, increasing it too high will only create undesired results where the robot can barely move properly. So we can, again, adjust the D value to a sweet spot so the robot can correct back to its starting position without any overshoot at all. The D value will generally be somewhere around 0, 0.0 something. It's important to note that you can spend hours tuning these values, adjusting them by 0 0.0001 and seeing if it'll work better, but ultimately it won't be exactly perfect, so it's better to aim for something good enough and then you can move on. If you don't have a dual PID system, then you're done with tuning this PIDF and you can move on to tuning the heading PIDF. Otherwise, if you do have the dual system enabled, then we'll have to move on to tuning the secondary PIDF. It's important to note to double check that the Boolean to use this is set to true. Otherwise, the robot's movements won't reflect the changes made through panels. Tuning the secondary PIDF is very similar to tuning the main one, and it's almost the exact same process. However, we're most concerned with tuning with the robot's ability to correct from smaller errors and we'll be testing with smaller distances. Shown here is a fairly well-tuned secondary PIDF. After following all of these steps, then we are done with this translational PIDF. Here's what a pretty well-tuned one would look like. Thank you for watching this video, and in the next one, we'll be going over tuning the heading, PIDF.